What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. So Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen just gave an interview, and she's asked a lot of questions about the impending default of our country, the debt limit raising this here. Republicans just said that they're not going to raise it until President Biden comes back from the G7 meeting. He's over in Hiroshima, Japan, where they literally dropped a nuclear bomb from World War II. And yeah, my how things have changed. And um, well, there's a significant potential nuclear bomb about to go off here uh, economically if we don't raise this debt ceiling. In fact, Janet Yellen was actually asked what bills the U.S. is not going to pay if this happens here in less than 10 days. So take a listen to what she has to say here and let me know your thoughts. This week, negotiations were on, and then they were off, then they were on again, as the bases of both political parties balked at some of the compromises that were being made public that were supposedly on the table. A Republican aide told NBC News that House conservatives are, quote, privately seething and how the talks have been going, saying Republicans are giving away their leverage. Well, then you had 11 progressive Democrats in the Senate and 66 in the House are arguing that President Biden should invoke the 14th Amendment and pull out of talks completely saying the Constitution requires the government to pay its debts. So, with the bases of both parties unhappy, in theory, we're in the sweet spot for a deal to get done. Or will the bases derail this deal? Joining me now is the Secretary of Treasury, Janet Yellen. Secretary Yellen, welcome back to Meet the Press. Thanks so much, Chuck. It's a pleasure to be with you. All right, I want to start with today's May 20th. 12 days is June 1st. How hard is 12 days? Uh, President Biden seemed to hint earlier this morning that he thought we're two to three weeks away and, you know, 12 days, two weeks, we could argue there. But how hard is this June 1st deadline? Well, I indicated um, in my last letter to Congress that we expect um, to be unable to pay all of our bills in early June and possibly as soon as June 1st. And um, I will continue to update Congress, but I certainly haven't changed my assessment. So I think that that's a, a, a hard right. deadline. I want to point out something that a lot of House conservatives just simply don't believe um, what Treasury is doing. I'm going to read you one quote here. Um, some conservative Republicans have said for months that they felt Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen had exaggerated the risk of a default in June in a bid to put pressure on the House Republican majority. Uh, she's going to play it out now, saying it's a crisis. The day is here, said Rep. Ralph Norman, a member of the Freedom Caucus. What do you think you could do to convince Congressman Norman that, um, that, June, that this early June deadline is real? Well, Treasury has a long history of informing Congress about um, how much cash and uh, headroom we have under the debt ceiling. And um, we take pride in the credibility of the forecasts that we make. Um, I would point out that the Congressional Budget Office has recently indicated that they expect that early June is a problem, will be a problem. And forecasters on Wall Street mm -hmm. who look at uh, information daily on our cash balances and resources agree. So right. um, th there will be hard choices to make uh, if the debt ceiling isn't raised. And, you know, I would simply say since 1789, the United States right. has a history of paying its bills on time. Uh, that's what the world uh, wants to see right. a continued commitment to do that. It's what underlies U.S. Treasury securities as the safest um, investment on the planet. And uh, it's not an okay. acceptable situation for us to be unable to pay our bills. I just want to sort of understand the go or no go to June 15th in this way. It's clear that June 1st is not hard, but it's it's the beginning of that period. What is the likelihood we can get to the June 15th tax receipts to avoid breaching the debt ceiling? Can you put a percentage on it? Is it 20 percent, 40 percent, something like that? Well, there's always uncertainty um, about uh, tax receipts and spending. Um, and 
So it's hard to be absolutely certain about this, but um, my assessment is that the odds of reaching June 15th while being able to pay all of our bills is quite low. Fair enough. Let me ask you about uh, what are the sticking points here. Uh, it, is, it does appear as if we heard President Biden bring up revenue, uh, meaning taxes, maybe it's closing loopholes, or maybe it's actually raising uh, a percentage here or there. Uh, is it a hard and fast line? Is the White House going to accept a deal on this uh, to raise the debt ceiling uh, that includes spending caps but does not include any increased revenues or taxes? Well, look, you know, the, the White House is negotiating in good faith um, with the Republicans to try to find um, a bipartisan solution. I, I don't want to negotiate in public and um, put down any red lines, but certainly the president has pointed out, and it's important for the American people to understand um, we're all concerned about deficits and fiscal responsibility, but uh, deficits can be addressed both through changes in spending mm -hmm. and also through changes in revenue. And the Republicans right. have taken that off the table. Um, something that greatly concerns me mm -hmm. is that they have even been in favor of um, removing funding right. that's been provided to the Internal Revenue Service to crack down on tax fraud. We have an enormous gap between the taxes we're collecting and what we should be collecting um, if everyone paid the taxes that right. they really owe. And that's really a reflection of tax fraud. It amounts to... Um, an estimated $7 trillion over yeah. the next decade. So equipping the IRS with the funding they need to audit high-income individuals and mm -hmm. uh, corporations, that's something that doesn't cost money. It, it nets money substantially mm -hmm. for the federal government. So, um, it, and, you know, of, cor of course, there are revenue proposals that right. we think but make the tax code fair. I'll get back to them in a second, but what are your thoughts on that? And the IRS, it literally would bring in more money. It would lower the debt um, by tax enforcement. The Republicans are kind of against this. You guys can let me know your thoughts on this. Um, and we, we all know the IRS is understaffed. If you have tried to call the IRS here any time within the last year or two, you probably know this. It's very hard to get through to the IRS. Sometimes you could wait on hold for an hour and the automated system will hang up on you. Sometimes you can get through. Sometimes you can't get through. Sometimes it's impossible. And uh, if you've been waiting for a tax refund, sometimes you'll get it. Sometimes you won't. Sometimes you can't reach anybody. If they owe you money, good luck. But if you owe them money, well, that's another story. It's it's a nightmare, right? Yeah. Uh, but see, the problem is, is that the, what they're talking about is with enforcement and stuff is really like auditing and going through more tax returns and stuff like that that really aren't caught. And what they're saying is that this would bring in a lot more money for the country, which is a very kind of uh, controversial thing. Should there be more audits? Should there be more audits on the wealthy? Should there be more audits in general on everybody? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let's uh, end with a phrase that I talked to you about at the beginning, and that is this idea of extraordinary measures. Is the 14th Amendment fall under the category of extraordinary measures? Well, extraordinary measures is used in a different way, but there has been that. much discussion of the 14th Amendment. And as President Biden said, I believe this morning, it doesn't seem like something that could be appropriately used in these circumstances, given the legal uncertainty right. um, around it and given the tight time frame right. we're on. So my right. devout hope is that right. Congress will raise the debt ceiling. But are you just going to pay all of our if, bills? If it doesn't happen, 
okay? Uh, and we're at this point. Are you just going to sit there and, and pick and choose? Or why not go and pay and then, you know, it's one of those, are you going to pay all of our debts and essentially let the courts tell us you shouldn't have? I mean, if we breach this debt ceiling, I understand not wanting to use it now. But are, you, are we really going to sit there and just let some bills go unpaid, not even trying this? Well, we take the debt ceiling seriously as a constraint on our ability to pay bills that are coming due. And um, my assumption is that if the debt ceiling isn't raised, there will be hard choices to make about um, what bills go unpaid. And... Um, so there will know, be bills on what you're saying on is of our what you're saying is if the debt ceiling is not raised, that there's going to be a default on President Biden's watch, even though he doesn't want it, that he's not you're not going to try any other measures. You'll allow a default on some debt if Congress doesn't raise this debt ceiling. Well, there will be some bill we we have to pay interest in principle on outstanding debt. Mm -hmm. We also have obligations to seniors who count on Social Security, our military that expects pay, um, contractors mm -hmm. who've provided services to the federal government, and some bills have to go unpaid. So there will be some bills unpaid if the debt ceiling is not raised. Yes, and um, many people, have including you decided many which credit bills? Rate, rating agencies... Have you decided which bills um, those are going to be yet? Well, the, I, look, I, w I would say we're focused on raising the debt ceiling, and there will be hard choices if that doesn't occur. Um, there can be no acceptable outcomes if the debt ceiling isn't raised, regardless of what decisions we make. Secretary Yellen, uh, Treasury Secretary uh, for President Biden, appreciate you coming on and sharing the administration's perspective. Thank you. Thanks. So, as you can see here, getting pretty serious. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen pretty much saying that June 1st or early June, uh, a hard deadline. She doesn't think they'll make it to June 15th. And um, they're going to have to pick and choose which bills not to pay if it comes to that. Um, remember, Republicans just walked out of the debt ceiling negotiations just 48 hours ago. Um, we're not really close at all. I've been saying this for a while. Republicans and Democrats are on two completely different pages. And this is pretty much a nightmare. Pretty much a nightmare. And they can't really default. It, it would be a financial collapse. U.S. dollar would collapse, the stock market would collapse, bond market would collapse, people's pensions, 401ks, retirement funds. It would be a nightmare. So let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe down below. Click the bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos here. It's completely free to do so. New videos come out here every day on our YouTube channel at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for liking and sharing these videos. Here's some videos you should watch next. This should be illegal, what they're doing in Congress here in this video. And President Biden just took two major threats. You can see that here in this video. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.